Well, welcome. We don't know who's watching, but uh, we, we do hope that you'll get blessed by this conversation between the three of us here. Let me just introduce myself. I'm, I'm John Clements. I'm the current pastor of the old Meeting House Congregational Church in Norwich, which we understand is probably the oldest in the Federation. It was gathered in 1643. And uh, we're really quite passionate about about things, and we've uh, we've travelled up today from Norwich to Nottingham to meet with Yvonne, the General Secretary of the Congregational Federation. Mm. But I've been brought here by my Church Secretary, Paul. Would you just like to say introduce yourself? Yes, uh, <coughs> my name is Paul McHenry. I'm Church Secretary of the Old Meeting House. Uh, uh, congregational Church in Norwich, and uh, and we are very proud to be part of the Congregational Federation, and uh, we just want to uh, encourage others in the congregational way, and we thought this would be a, a good first step for us on our journey of encouraging others um, on this journey as well. That's great. Mm -hmm. So Yvonne, we, you know, it's not us. We want people to hear your <laughs> thoughts because you, you're in. You, you know, you have a really good understanding because you're in touch with so many of mm. the chapels around the country but could you start by just saying a little bit about yourself some of the things that actually led you into the congregational church mm. okay so um, I started attending a congregational church when I was eight years old um, because through the local school the school that I attended we got an invitation to be part of the girls brigade so I grew up within the Girls' Brigade tradition within my local congregational church and that was where I instantly just felt at home. I'd been to other children's organisations but once I was part of the congregational church and the brigade that was there, that was where I had my belonging, that was where I felt loved, that is where I gave my life to Christ, that is where I grew up in the church with my family as well and where I've been worshipping and been a member ever since. Right, that's, that's great. Yeah, chip in for us, I forget to say. <laughs> not, 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 <laughs> not at all. I mean, yeah. it, it's wonderful sort of hearing that. Um, so it's a very much part of your DNA almost. Yes. You know, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, my family actually was a Catholic family. So um, for us to be then settled in the congregational tradition yeah. was completely different. A lot of my family are still still belong to the Catholic wow, tradition wow. Um, and have really interesting conversations about different things but love I'm each sure other just do. as well. Ab absolutely, absolutely. So how do you think um, that this now fits in with your current role as General Secretary? So gen my gen role as General Secretary is split into three parts. Okay, so then. the first part is about support and advice because within the congregational tradition there is no hierarchical structure. Everything is based on the local, so my role is just to, to support and advise the congregational churches with whatever support needs that they mm. may have. Um, but also to be the ambassador, so to work in ecumenical circles, to represent them. So I do a lot of visits to the different churches, and I know I've been to Norwich, um, so that I can do that ambassadory role well. But the mm. third element of my job, which is just littered through everything else I do, is to promote the distinctiveness of congregationalism, what it means to be a mm. congregationalist mm. today, what it means to belong to a congregational church, and why and is that different maybe from belonging to any other church. And I believe right that it is. Um, <laughs> and the reason for that is because when we are part of a congregational church, we're asked if we want to become a member of that church. Mm. And membership is distinct within the congregational tradition. And what that membership means is that you declare publicly your love and your belief in Jesus mm. as your Lord and Saviour. Mm. And um, if possible, if you're able to actually share your testimony with everybody within that church. But it also means that you then commit to that local you commit to the local church, so you commit to prayer, you commit to financially giving, you commit to supporting in whichever ways that you can to not only be part of that community that is the local mm. church membership, mm. but also to, to then 
serve the community in which that church is based. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. There's so many churches and it's so confusing for people to know which one. But um, what would you say, say, say are the current strengths of the congregational church? Why join a congregational church as opposed to different... Well, there's no hierarchy, so there's no um, mandate from um, anyone saying this is what you must follow, this is what you must do, this is the times that you must open, these are the prayers that you must say. Mm -hmm. um, but I suppose the main reason is what about the, the local um, brief that you serve that local community depending on the needs mm -hmm. of that. So every decision is through the power of the Holy Spirit at that church meeting. So to join a congregational church means that you can play an active part in making a difference within mm. that church. And uh, maybe that you wouldn't be able to if you were part of any other church. So what are the strengths, you know, if, if you join a congregational church, what are the benefits as, as opposed to joining like the local Anglican church? You know? um, well, being part of any church, you know, I believe in the kingdom, the kingdom of God and mm. where, whatever church you belong to, you give your heart to Jesus and you do whatever Jesus has called you to do in whatever church. But being Amen. part of a congregational church means that you have that extra responsibility, that it, it, it's part of the promise that you make to be a member. Right. Um, so that you can um, serve. We believe in the priesthood of all believers, that God can speak to each one of us, any one of us, mm. and call us to any particular role so that we all have our part to play so whether you're the member whether you're the minister or organizing the flowers or organizing the christmas carol service everybody has their part to play and everybody is seen as one together yeah i mean there's so many new churches springing up house churches and all the rest of it i think wasn't the, the uh, congregational church going back to the new testament model Yes, the Congregational Church is based on the New Testament model in, in Acts. So if you read Acts 2, Acts 3, Acts 4, you will see in those passages how everybody made decisions together. So they made they had votes and that was how things, how things happened. And that's the, the model that the Congregational Tradition is based on. Yes. Lots of churches we here are in trouble one way or another. But, but what do you see? Because you meet pastors and things all over the country what are the sort of the major strengths that you think could be the way forward for the congregational church today listening to god in and praying mm -hmm. everything has to start with prayer yeah um so the the way a church grows is by being humble and gracious and uh, teaching the biblical principles mm -hmm. and being for that community what they need reaching out to them finding out what the community need so not being a closed shop but being more open um to to the needs of the day uh, people we're, we're in a crisis in lots of different ways mm -hmm. and how as a church can we reach out and the government for a long time are now looking to churches because they realise actually churches are doing so much to support their communities and we're trying to strengthen that communication and that relationship between how we engage with government and how government engage with churches. Right. Um, and that's a real positive, that's, that's a prophecy actually that I was reading mm. about a couple of days ago that the church now is able to really flourish again yeah. and be there and um, but we also know that a lot of churches are struggling because of demographics um, and because of the changes within our community but actually at the heart of everything we do has to be uh, prayer and um, just doing what we can churches sometimes try to be everything for everyone yeah. and they can't do that what they need to do um, is work together have everything based on prayer and follow where their calling is mm. and just meet what they can within their communities. Mm. That's interesting, mm. we were talking about calling earlier again and that seems to be a word that seems to be, has been missing for a very long time I would suggest, 
uh, where we can end up going down roads that we shouldn't necessarily be going down. And as you say, bring prayer back at the heart and uh, collectively discerning the will of God for moving forward. Mm. Do you think that with, uh, and hopefully you can describe some of the challenges that we may be facing ahead with the Congregational Church mm -hmm. uh, or the Federation, some of the challenges we're facing, but how, what I've just said, coming back to the heart of prayer and, uh, and calling, um, how that could meet some of those sort of challenges that we may be facing um, as well. I think the, the, the two biggest challenges I think that we have, as, as all churches are, um, demographic, everyone getting older within our churches, yeah. so a lot of churches have, mm -hmm. within our congregational tradition, have small numbers, not all, you know, we, we have growth as well, there's lots mm -hmm. of growth, but um, you know, there's so many congregational churches which actually are being run by people in their 90s. <laughs> Uh, and I hope yes. that I am yes. just as sprightly and energetic in my 90s oh, and uh, such a blessing. Mm. Um, and I think, but that's also a weakness. Mm. But then prayer is such a powerful tool that I think we underestimate often, even as Christians. Yes. Um, and coming back, what was the other bit of the question? I've lost my yeah, turn. Yeah, it's just the combination of like calling, the, understanding the, calling. Yeah, the second thing, so the, yeah. the, the, the challenge was, yeah, the, was the, build, the, build, the building. Now, yes. You guys have an amazing mm. building, but that is a lot of stress mm -hmm. and um, a lot of, um, yeah, drains a lot of people mm. be, from the mission and, and what we're called to do as mm -hmm. people of God. And buildings are amazing, you know, they're places, but I think that can, that can be one of the challenges that we face. Yeah, I think that needs a lot of prayer, doesn't it? Because um, in some ways, some could say they could be a blessing and a curse at the same mm. time. Mm. But at the same time, I think it could still be an incredible asset within uh, the congregational system. Mm. With so many chapels mm. all around the country sitting disused still. Mm. Um, and we know the reasons why um, but at the same time we still need an environment to operate in Abs and as Absolutely. you know uh, as I found previously in pastoring a church previously as well um, it can be so hard finding venues these days mm. Mm. Uh, and yet at the same time we're actually sitting on incredible resource yes. uh, yeah. but it's how Lord can the, the resources be used Correctly, yeah. stewarded correctly, isn't it? And being part of the Congregational yes. Federation, yes. Um, mm -hmm. as you, managing trustees, we also offer that mm. service to have trusteeship so that mm. we can help with the burden yeah. um, and offer grant systems for churches. And there are lots mm. of other organisations that also help churches with mm. their building. But, um, you know, that is absolutely have a yeah. place, have a focus, mm. but it's also about making sure that building that's like accessible, is warm, is comfortable for people to be, to Abs want to absolutely. be able to come in and safe for people to be able to come in. Yeah. And safeguarding is also one of the priorities mm, yes. of the Federation mm. to make sure that we have, we have a process in place that supports those churches so that mm. we can be seen and are safe places for people to be, welcoming places mm. for people to be, and places where people hear that good news of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. amen. Yeah. So, one of the things is with the congregations that each church is independent. Yes. So the old meeting is an old church. Yeah. But how can an old church like that, I was changing the local area, how can it make an input in encouraging congregationalism nationally? Is there a way that individual churches can have a, a wider influence than just locally. Mm. Yes, because um, that's why the Congregational Federation was formed. Mm. So back in 1972, when there was a move mm. to try and create one church, and um, that local independence of voting whether churches wanted mm. to be something more central or to have remained that local governance um, structure, mm some churches decided to stay completely independent and not form mm -hmm. and move into the United Reformed Church, which, right. which is what um, was created in 1972. But those churches that voted not to be part of, of the United Reformed Church 
they still didn't want to be completely isolated on their own as mm. congregational churches. Some did, and, and that, that's fine, but a lot didn't. They wanted still to have connected, to be connected and have yes. gatherings of of congregational churches to be able to encourage and inspire and one of the things i learned actually from the history course and the the mm. tour john organized this amazing tour of um historic churches around the around the area it was a few years ago but you mm. see that information stayed with me and what yeah. what it was was about um, congregational churches would preach and ministers would preach in the morning mm. and in the afternoon they'd all come together and they'd share their sermon ideas they'd share what had happened and there'd be that real fellowship and that's mm. one of the things that I'm trying mm. to work on encouraging and we can do that more with being geographically spread now through Zoom mm. so I bring ministers together in a space every week to try and share ideas based uh, literally based on, on that 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 stayed right. with me on that right. time to be able to, to well we need to share fellowship with others yes, sure. we're not meant yes. to be mm, yes. christians on our own That's we're right. meant to be in fellowship yes. and the congregational federation was formed so that congregational churches could have fellowship together we yes. exist to bring congregational churches together and that's what we're constantly trying to work and encourage but mm. we know the demographic is difficult we know mm. people find travel difficult as well so it's trying to create that balance mm. and make yes. that happen yes. but congregational churches can meet with other congregational churches pray for other congregational churches there's gatherings there's national gatherings there's training that can be a part of and each local has a testimony to share and this is also i think mm. is one of the strengths that we need to promote we need to share more about what god has done for us mm. and how god has spoken to us god that created the universe is mm. interested in us yeah. and we need to share those small stories mm. Mm. how god has touched or worked or influenced our lives more with everybody that we meet and we pray for those opportunities to be able to do that mm -hmm. and i think that's what's at the heart of the congregational tradition is sharing yes. and encouraging yes. one another because we're not meant to be in isolation no. we're meant to be in community we pray mm -hmm. our father not my father that's right mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. so um what would be your vision for the congregational church as a whole oh you know the answer to this question sure. revival we want to see growth yes we want yes. to see the congregational federation yeah. grow we have two new mm. churches join this year i've got another two churches um about to join or go through the process of joining yes. um and you know we want to see new ways of being church we mm. want to encourage those churches who don't want to close, who don't, who want, are desperate for more people. Mm. Desperate, desperate to have that community feel and bring yes. people into, mm. into faith. Mm. Um, but we, we want to see more growth and, and we do as much as we can to do that. So next year we are having a focus of smaller churches. So um, embracing being a smaller church is yes. okay. Um, how do we do mission as a smaller church? How, how do we address safeguarding as a smaller church? Mm -hmm. How do we handle children and families in a smaller church? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that we, we, can really, um, we can really develop and encourage one another that it's okay you mm -hmm. know, to be wherever mm -hmm. you are. And uh, as long as you're faithful and, and give God all your concerns and needs, that's that verse in Philippians, which, which is just one of my favourite verses that makes me laugh out loud. You know, pray about, don't worry about anything, which is just impossible, but pray about everything. But yes. it, it's key. It's key. Nice. <laughs> it's right. That's wonderful. Isn't well, it, thank you so much for finding the time. Yes. You talked a lot about prayer. Would you like to end this interview with a prayer? Oh, that would be, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Father God, uh, I just thank you so much that you are always with us, no matter where we are, no matter how we feel, you're always there beside us. Mm -hmm. Your hand is upon us to guide us and to bless us. So I just pray for each person now that is watching this film. Mm -hmm. I just pray that you will make yourself known to them, mm -hmm. that you will bless them in an unexpected way um, and you will lead them in discernment of decisions that are right 
and when they're challenged with um, when they're faced with challenges and we just thank you for your bible we thank you for the word that we have that is freely available to us to be able to read and share and we thank you that that is the, our guide for life and do we just pray for the congregational federation we mm. pray for the churches we pray for that revival we pray for that growth and we thank you for your faithfulness to us amen amen and, and finally if if people are wanting to learn more about the congregational church, mm -hmm. is there any literature, or how, how can they how can they get hold of literature about it? Um, well, if you go on to Facebook, the Congregational Federation, you can follow us there, or onto the website, which is congregational.org.uk, and the contact details are there. If you contact the office, we will send you maybe one of our magazines or some of the information about what it means to be a congregational church and what a congregational church is. And the old meeting, we have a website, um, which is fairly comprehensive, isn't it, Paul? Very comprehensive. And uh, if you want to look at look that up, all our talks are recorded each week, so you get different people talking. But um, mm. that's www.oldmeetinghousechurch.org.uk. Good. Wonderful. Look it up. Thank you. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you.